back in the 60s, when the Russians and the Americans were desperate to beat one another and blast a human into space. They had no idea what to expect. They had to prepare for anything. Now I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're spinning in a teacup at a theme park. But suddenly the ride is getting out of control and you start spinning faster and faster. It's hard to breathe. It takes a tremendous amount of effort to take air into your lungs. And now imagine you're in a prison cell all by yourself. You can't watch films. You can't read books. You can't talk to anyone except for the prison guard. And you have no idea how long you're stuck there for. And that's what it feels like to simulate isolation. You can open your eyes now. Back in the early days of space travel, astronauts had to simulate extreme depressurization, which means doctors lowered pressure so much that astronauts' blood was about to boil. Their hands got bigger and bigger, and they started resembling rubber gloves. The risk of self-explosion was enormous. These first astronauts pushed their body to the limits of what they could withstand. Because they had to prepare for anything, but they forgot human emotions. Now, do you remember this really annoying colleague of yours? And they ask you if you want to hang out. And you say, sorry, I have so much work on. Sorry, I have other plans. In space, there is no escape. <laughs> Every little detail becomes life-threatening. Back in the 70s, Skylab crew spent three months working and living in space, the longest mission of its time. And NASA demanded pretty much a 24-hour work schedule. They packed day and night with scientific experiments, observations of Earth, maintenance of equipment. And after hours of exhaustion and arguments with mission control, Astronauts decided to switch off their radios and ignore NASA, spending a day, having a holiday, observing the Earth. What was NASA going to do? Come and get them? Living in a tin can far above the Earth is stressful. Scientists know that being in a confined environment for a long time decreases your critical thinking, your focus, your attention. And yet to this day, the main focus in space exploration is technology, not people. And that sort of works for now. So far, the only people who blasted into space who have been exceptionally trained and skilled, pilots, scientists, and engineers, but the future of humanity is Mars colonization. I have no doubt about that. It's the boldest, most ambitious, and intriguing adventure of our lifetime. And when we do go to Mars, thousands of people just like you and I will blast into space. And if you can't cope with living conditions, it doesn't matter how many particles Mars rover can analyze. What matters is people, not just technology. And that's why I founded Mars Nation. Our ambition is to bring everybody curious about space travel to solve the challenges that these first explorers will face. We solve problems like, how can you build a society on Mars? How can you live in isolation? How can you survive in a hostile environment? And we train participants in innovation techniques to come up with bigger and better ideas to solve 
the real need of these first explorers. And they come up with some amazing ideas from VR pets to help astronauts feel loved to courses that astronauts can do and learn a new skill while they are on a mission to Mars. Our focus is people, not just technology. So how do you design for such a diverse group of people? You bring diversity. The more diverse experiences come in, the more unexpected solutions come out. And that's why Mars Nation is open to anybody who is curious about space travel, from scientists and engineers to designers and artists. Our focus is people, not just technology. So how can we imagine ourselves as people in this new world that doesn't exist yet? Humans get used to things really fast. You lock your front door on autopilot. That's habituation. But that habit stops you from imagining things, from seeing problems around you. And scientists have shown over and over again that putting a beginner in the room creates bigger and bad ideas. Because beginners ask unexpected questions because they see things we don't see. And that's beginner's mind. Back in the 60s, scientists and engineers tried to get around weightlessness by attaching astronauts to seats with Velcro. But turns out, astronauts were floating out of their trousers because they were sticking to seats too much. And that was the first problem of this kind. Now it's a habit. And the same will happen on Mars. These human challenges will come up for the first time. And that's why it's about people, not just technology. Now, how can we make these first explorers feel at ease? We bring empathy. We put ourselves in their shoes. When you imagine an astronaut, you might think of this, or maybe even this. But in reality, it's a lot of hard work. They keep a space station alive. They maintain equipment, go on spacewalks. Back in the 60s, the comfort of astronauts wasn't on anyone's radar. A Soviet designer had a weekend to design an interior of a spacecraft. Unpaid, her name was kept secret for decades. And that was her vision. A sofa, a table, some space for a toilet on the side. And that's what it actually looks like now. It hasn't changed much since the 70s. Well, no, it's a spacecraft, so the job of a spacecraft is to get you safely to a space station. You wouldn't spend more than a couple of days there. But the International Space Station is home for at least six months. And it doesn't look that dissimilar. Except astronauts have a tiny space that they customize with objects dear to them, just like you would here on Earth. And you don't need to lie horizontally because you're weightless. So if you need a nap, you just attach yourself to a wall. <laughs> Going to Mars is a totally different story. There's no floating. The gravity on Mars is one third of the Earth's. You need a much bigger space. The missions are much longer than six months. Sure, you say, I've seen the Martian. I know what the bases would look like. Yes, but who actually wants to live in a white box that looks like a hospital room? Designers and architects 
will use the weight limitation and design inflatable bases that expand into a kitchen, communication hub, and live in area. Small detail will make a huge difference. Paintings of rivers, green landscapes will remind those first explorers of home. Windows with no technical function will give them a sense of wonder and make the experience more human. And that's why it's about people, not just technology. You don't need to create a whole new world, but you need to bring empathy, diversity, and beginner's mind to have exactly the same experience as everybody else, but see what others don't see. Thank you.